But let's get into Nike the stock. I don't want to call it Nike either. I call it Nike in Ireland, but mm. all the Americans will be on the line calling it Nike. Uh, so mm. let's get into Nike the stock now. So down about 40%, a bit more from all-time mm. highs set in November of 2021. Currently trading at a price-to-earnings ratio of just over 30. Its five-year average price-to-earnings ratio is about 45. So we can see it's definitely trading at a discount. And then the shares are still above their COVID low. So it isn't really seen the same downturn as Disney or PayPal, which we'll get to later in the show. So I think the struggles and why it's fallen has come basically from an excess inventory issue. So post-pandemic, so I think it had it. A not enough inventory over the pandemic. It got exposed, especially for its supply chain in China. Since then, it's overbought and overproduced. And that is always a concern, especially with the apparel companies. We saw that really affect Under Armour over the last, we'll say, five, 10 years in terms of flooding the markets and then becoming discounts and all the rest. And obviously, that plays wreaks havoc to a company's brand, something that's so important to Nike. But I think in terms of the inventory, it's kind of abating. We've seen some very positive earnings reports in more recent times, but there's still the lingering effects on costs, pressure on margins, and then the multiple compression, which we've seen. The other concern we mentioned is the strength of the consumer, especially in China. So China is responsible for about 14% of total revenues last year in fiscal 2023. And this is the region that's kind of come under pressure, we'll say in terms of strength of the consumer and we obviously know apparel and footwear is 100 percent a discretionary expense even in america we've seen this as well uh Foot Locker and dick sporting goods had two awful earnings reports and brought nike down with it during the summer so that's kind of we'll say the bear case mm. now we're going to discuss disney and paypal after this and their mm. issues could be considered a lot more systemic than what nike is facing now i think in my opinion anyways this feels much more like a short-term blip we'll say than anything like inherently wrong with the business or that could say break an investment thesis what's your what's your opinions on that yeah i completely agree i mean as you know mike i generally avoid fashion and nike you could say is on the periphery of fashion it almost transcends fashion it, it is, of course produces high performance sports where that needs to be fashionable but it's it feels like an everlasting brand and what you described there which is effectively the inventory struggles that every apparel and fashion maker goes through is just their roadmap that's just the gig they're in and I, you can imagine that they are far far better at it than the next because you can just think of the resources and the learnings that nike has had over the last uh, whatever it is 30 years so uh, yeah i i think when we when we kind of put a spotlight on an industry or sector specific problem part of your thinking needs to be well they have armies of mba students thinking about this problem way harder than me to sort it out and and i it's funny like you're right i think for nike and the other two brands you said disney and what's the third one we're going to talk about paypal we're gonna, paypal right so certainly nike and disney are these kind of american icon brands they are resourced and paced by the fact that three of them are american icons and and we'll, we'll dive i have some stories about paypal hope i get them right because i said i'm treating from the hip here but the but the um they are three mega brands in entirely different areas and i think they are just what you've described there is just a oh yeah another day at the office for nike so when you, you said as you were describing your inventory problem the whole story about under armor flooded to mind and it's really what do they do with excess inventory because luxury brands usually destroy excess inventory rather than discount it and i think that that's not something that you would do in the sports world uh just it's it just to me it doesn't make any sense because you're not trying to uphold a brand value but i certainly my natural inclination is to ignore the ebbs and flows of the inventory story for a business like nike yeah and just touching on that like kind of protecting the brand equity we'll say so forbes mm. calculated nike's brand equity at it was around 40 billion dollars so i think it put it at the 13th most valuable brand in the world up alongside you know trillion dollar businesses um and that's actually in, what's really impressive is those piper sandler just did a they do an annual teen survey basically where they ask teens what they like what they don't like nike was the number one brand in both footwear and in apparel 
So not only is it mm. built this massive brand, but it's protecting it as well in terms of the younger generations. It's not slowing down whatsoever. And I think that was the yeah. problem with Under Armour, especially. We always go back to it because Under Armour shows what not to do with the brand, especially in this space, whereas Nike has done it for so mm. long and exemplary, we'll say. And, it, and even now, like, you know, it's not going after maximum revenue, we'll say. It, it took its products off Amazon. It's it's not selling at certain stores. It reorganized its uh, relationship with Foot Locker, with other wholesalers, all to protect its cool, I suppose. And that's and that's the one thing I think that we always come back to with Nike is that it ha- has this brand value and it protects it so well that it's the real economic moat there that other competitors just can't create. And I think that's why yeah. that's why I'm putting Nike maybe aside from the other two, which we'll discuss now, I think. So, so yeah, yeah. I'm with you there. Yeah. It definitely feels like much more par for the course, we'll say. And As, maybe maybe a good opportunity in terms of buying. We, we, it doesn't it doesn't trade at thirty times earnings very often. Uh, I think it hasn't yeah. traded since two thousand and seventeen. It hasn't been this cheap. So, yeah. And as you know only too well at the moment, uh, Mike, we're we are busy just readying a new service for launch called Nexus, which combines AI screening and human intelligence. See, I can't miss the opportunity to plug it, uh, and I think it's going to be the greatest service uh, of its type ever launched but anyway uh, i continue to plug but i looked uh, at nike uh, in nexus and and what i found was that it has uh like this really incredible sustained return on equity which was very unusual in the industry its return on equity at the moment is around 34 percent its return on invested capital has remained more or less at or above 20 percent for years and years and years and its sales are growing and when you take those three uh, quantitative factors and combine them, which is growing sales and a highly capital efficient business, you are ultimately looking at a business that will regress, uh, or sorry, rather revert to the mean. And its mean at the moment, which is its share price is down, is feels to me like a very temporary um, a temporary problem, if you like, on a, on a business that's of the highest quality. And you don't need to dive into numbers to know that. I think your average bystander will just look at Nike. And again, comparing to Under Armour, I remember I remember when I invested in Under, in Under Armour, I would say f- maybe 15 or 20 years ago, the logic, uh, uh, my logic at the time was this is a challenger brand. This, like Nike is the brand your dad wears and young people want to wear this new up and coming brand that stands for something different. And as time has gone by, uh, initially Under, uh, Under Armour delivered against that, we're the cool brand and your dad, leave the Nikes for your dad. Uh, whereas it's actually done a complete uh, 180 degree turn. Whereas Nike is now, from my perception, the cooler brand and Under Armour is that discounted thing and big shopping, you know, discount places like Woodbury Common and whatever they're called. 